half a billion Facebook users' information leaked onto a hacker's website. The very, very rich get very, very richer. Plus, YouTube shields Joe Biden from criticism. Then more on this week's headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. According to cyber experts, the personal information of about half a billion Facebook users has been posted to a website used by hackers. Details in some of these cases include people's full name, location, birth date, phone number, and even relationship status. Great. So now hackers know my dating life has been complicated since 2013. Facebook has no plans to notify the half-billion users affected by the leak. Facebook spokesperson Andy Stone said, This is old data that was previously reported on in 2019. We found and fixed this issue in August 2019. But even though this information is old, it could still be useful to hackers and identity thieves. Rachel Toback, CEO of Social Proof Security, explained, these are the pieces of data cybercriminals spend time searching for to perform social engineering attacks, a type of hacking. But now, they're all in one place and easily accessible in this leak, which makes social engineering quicker and easier. Honestly, I don't know why all this data would need to be posted to a hacking website. There's already a website where people constantly share private, personal information including their full name, birth date, location, and relationship status. It's called Facebook. The only reason I'd hack someone's Facebook would be to get them to stop sharing so much. No one cares you had hot dogs for breakfast, Donna. It's not cute, it's sad. The worst part of the story is that apparently countless people gained access to my Facebook profile, and my beach body pic still only got six likes. Stingy monsters. Speaking of complicated relationship statuses, Republicans in corporate America are still in a spat over the controversial Georgia voting law. For an in-depth look at that law, watch the video we did earlier this week. Republican Senator Mitch McConnell criticized companies protesting this Georgia voting law. So my warning, if you will, to corporate America is to stay out of politics. It's not what you're designed for. And don't be intimidated by the left into taking up causes that put you right in the middle of one of America's greatest political debates. McConnell also added, corporations will invite serious consequences if they become a vehicle for far-left mobs to hijack our country from outside the constitutional order. Yeah, you better watch out, corporations. If you don't knock it off, Mitch McConnell might stop taking your donations. That'll show you. But I agree with Mitch McConnell. Corporations shouldn't get involved in politics. After all, who can forget all the sexual harassment allegations that came out against corporate politician Mayor McCheese? However, McConnell's criticism seems odd considering his support of the Citizens United Supreme Court decision in 2010. That decision supported the right of corporations to exercise free speech by spending unlimited amounts of money to support political candidates. So it seems Mitch McConnell thinks elections are something you can buy, but you shouldn't talk about in public. Like sex robots. They come in discrete packages for a reason, I've been told. But for now, it seems corporations have spoken. They believe citizen voices should never be suppressed, except on social media. More on that after the break. Welcome back. The U.S. National Labor Relations Board has found Amazon illegally fired two employees. The employees had organized workers around climate action and warehouse conditions during the pandemic before being fired in April 2020. These were the most upsetting Amazon fires in 2020, aside from these Amazon fires in 2020. In a statement, Amazon said, 
We terminated these employees not for talking publicly about working conditions, safety, or sustainability, but rather for repeatedly violating internal policies. However, Amazon didn't clarify what those internal policies were. It seems like the only thing you're not allowed to leave a review for on Amazon is Amazon. One of the terminated employees said, It is a moral victory and it feels incredible to be not only on the right side of history, but the right side of the law. Dang! She missed a perfect opportunity to say, Amazon Prime, more like Amazon Crime. <laughs> this is why you watch America Uncovered. Sophisticated humor. Meanwhile, Amazon workers have voted overwhelmingly against a union at a warehouse in Alabama. Less than 30% of the votes were in favor of a union. The vote was held more than a week ago, but the ballots were only publicly counted this week. Part of the reason the results have been delayed is because Amazon challenged hundreds of the ballots, which were largely mailed in over a two-month period. Gee, why does that sound familiar? Now that Amazon has won the vote, the union has announced that it will challenge the election results. They're accusing Amazon of stealing the vote. Gee, why does that sound familiar? Besides wanting to fix Amazon's crumbling public image, CEO Jeff Bezos announced he was in favor of raising the corporate tax to support the nation's crumbling infrastructure. In a statement posted on Amazon's website, Bezos wrote, we recognize this investment will require concessions from all sides, both on the specifics of what's included, as well as how it gets paid for. We're supportive of a rise in the corporate tax rate. Jeff Bezos is happy to have Amazon pay 10 times as much in taxes as they usually do, because 10 times zero is still zero. Tax loopholes. That's how you become the richest man in the world, which Jeff Bezos is officially. He was ranked number one on Forbes' annual billionaires list for the fourth year in a row. Speaking of number one, Amazon drivers aren't allowed to take bathroom breaks, so they pee in bottles while on the road. Isn't that fun? You know what else is fun? While the government response to the pandemic laid waste to the lower and middle class financially, the rich got even richer. This year's Forbes billionaires are worth a combined $13.1 trillion, up from $8 trillion last year. In fact, this pandemic was so profitable for the wealthy that nearly 500 people became billionaires during it. This is the sort of thing that makes you want to start a revolution. But even if you did, I would just make Jeff Bezos richer, since the only place you can buy a guillotine these days is on Amazon. Speaking of comical supervillains, in the latest issue of the Captain America comic, Steve Rogers' archenemy Red Skull tries recruiting young men online by espousing views modeled after clinical psychologist and lobster lover Jordan Peterson. Peterson responded to being likened to a Nazi supervillain, at first with astonishment, then with memes, including posting his own quotes over images of Red Skull. Look. You can make anybody's ideas seem evil if you put them in the mouth of a supervillain. Don't believe me? Here's Thanos quoting Mahatma Gandhi. Sinister, isn't it? And why would Captain America hate Jordan Peterson for his philosophy? It makes a lot more sense for Captain America to hate Peterson for being a filthy Canadian. More after the break. Welcome back. California Governor Gavin Newsom announced on Tuesday the state will fully reopen its economy on June 15th. Newsom said that as long as COVID hospitalizations remain low and vaccines remain plentiful, we can now begin planning for our lives post-pandemic. Of course, Newsom's plans post-pandemic all involve soliciting donations to fight attempts at recalling him. Say, do you think Gavin Newsom is reopening California to placate voters who are unhappy with his lockdown policies? Nah, I'm sure it's unrelated. I know, because he said so. And that's a face you can trust. Should Gavin Newsom get recalled this November, one possible contender for the next California governor is Caitlyn Jenner. Jenner has reportedly been meeting with GOP operatives. They plan to recreate a scenario similar to how Arnold Schwarzenegger got elected governor during California's last recall election 
in 2003. If she's successful, Jenner would be in charge of driving California's economy, which has a lot of people nervous considering Jenner's history with driving. Another Republican making political moves is former Vice President Mike Pence. He signed a deal to release two books, which could potentially build excitement ahead of a 2024 presidential run. Because when you think of Mike Pence, the first thing that comes to mind is excitement. But I think Pence should actually run as a Democrat. After all, when he was vice president under Trump, there was widespread support among liberals for Pence to take over. Speaking of bland old guys in the White House, President Biden announced his administration is ahead of schedule on vaccines. They've moved up the timeline by two weeks to make all adults in the U.S. eligible for coronavirus vaccines. As of now, one in four U.S. adults is now fully vaccinated. Biden is on schedule to meet his new goal of distributing 200 million doses of the vaccine within his first 100 days in office. It shouldn't be a surprise that Biden's vaccination plan is so efficient. Considering his decades in politics, he has ample experience dealing with pricks. Besides coronavirus, President Biden has also received immunity from criticism. YouTube deleted more than 2.5 million dislikes from the official White House channel. YouTube said the dislikes were removed because they were considered spam, explaining we have policies and systems in place to ensure that the engagement on YouTube is authentic and remove any fraudulent metrics. However, YouTube didn't elaborate on how they're able to determine if likes and dislikes are spam. Frankly, the only spam I'm concerned about on YouTube are the constant emails and ads asking me to join YouTube Premium. Not gonna happen, YouTube. Stop asking. YouTube is now testing a new design that hides the dislike count altogether in an attempt to protect users from targeted dislike campaigns. Yeah, it's probably just a bunch of Russian bots. It's definitely not Biden voters feeling betrayed when he does something like restart construction on Trump's border wall the same wall that he previously called xenophobic and racist. And it definitely isn't supporters of the Second Amendment worried about executive actions Biden announced Thursday about gun control, or how Biden dismissed the Second Amendment saying, no amendment is absolute. Nope, those dislikes aren't honest feedback on Biden's job performance. It's gotta be Russian bots. But removing or hiding dislikes doesn't actually stop criticism. It just stops Biden from hearing about it. Because as we all know, Joe Biden is an avid YouTube user under his screen name, Conelicker69. But Biden doesn't need to be protected from criticism. He needs to be protected from stares. If you're gonna remove something from YouTube instead of dislikes, get rid of the people making annoying thumbnails like this. Look, if you don't want a lot of dislikes on your YouTube video, all you have to do is be honest, engaging, and give the people what they want. Like the classic video, Dog Fart Cat Puke. Dog Fart Cat Puke is so upfront and honest, it should be hired as White House Press Secretary. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Leave your comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.